Soon, you'll be all right then. You're gonna be all right. Come on, quickly. Go when he's hurt real bad. Get back from those doors. Get back, back now. Is he going to be all right, is he? I said get back! Do you want to end up like this too? Stand clear. Shocking. Now! I need to know how many minutes he's been like this. Oh, I don't know. How should I know? Stand clear. Shocking. Now! Did anyone see what happened? No. And clear, shopping now. And we'll back behind the cars, please. And release. Okay, let's have a quick history of what's happened here. We have an unknown child, male, about 14, found at an electricity substation. He was in cardiac arrest. Pulseless and not breathing. Put in another drip and let's get a three lead ECG on. Reckon me the plastic surgeon won't be able to do anything with that. Ten to fifteen percent full thickness burns over the front of his thighs mainly, another fifteen percent to his lower abdomen and groin. Partial thickness to chest and neck area. And he's got a charred arm and forearm. Looks like badly burnt cornea, right eye, and similar and left, possibly irreparable. What? Oh. We're gonna need a crew at the moment. Joint and team. They're gonna need a confessor. Hi. What have you got? Fourteen-year-old boy made contact with the business end of this lot. How bad? He might not make it. Witnesses? Not yet. We're asking around. The juicer's off, isn't it? 
<laughs> Believe me, I'd be back there if it wasn't. Uh, that's Ericsson, the engineer. Do you need him? Please. Hello, Mr. Erickson. Hi. I'm Detective Constable Randall. Tell me, what exactly are we looking at here? Well, it's a distribution substation. High voltage electricity comes in one side, goes through the gear, and low voltage comes out the other side. Well, this one supplies enough power for about 500 houses, or did. And what do you have to do to do this to it? I suspect that something has made a connection across the terminals here and here. If that did happen, a hell of a lot of power has gone exactly where it shouldn't go. And? It goes bang. Explodes with an incredible ferocity. I tell you, you wouldn't want to be standing here when that happened. The lad sounds lucky to be alive at all. The injuries he'll have? If he lives, I wouldn't call him lucky. This sort of thing happen often around electrical installations? No. But it needn't happen at all. Because the whole supply system is fenced off and locked up, well out of reach. And then there's always the idiots. So you think the young lad's only got himself to blame then? Well, you could say that. I guess once you go past the warning signs, you've only got yourself to blame. But if these doors here were already broken open... It was a death trap. Yeah, it's been used as some sort of den. It looks like a graffiti gang. Very cosy, what with instant death sitting in the doorway. Don't touch that, please. I'm going to have a forensic examination done in this place. It means the power could be off to all those homes and businesses longer, you know. Yeah, I understand. But I must get to the bottom of this. I really do need to contact his mother. With these burns, I really don't know if we've got ourselves a winner here, you know. Burns unit are happy to take him as soon as we can get him there. Look, whoever you are, will you please go away, Andy? They're not allowed in here. Come on. Is it going to be all right? Are you a friend of his? W yeah, I know him. Look, I just want to know if he's going to be OK. He's very, very ill. Do you know his name? No, I don't know. Okay. What's your name? Sean. Look, is he going to leave? Let's sit down. It's too early to say. When people survive severe electrical burns, there can be all sorts of long-term problems. Did you see what happened? Look, you know more than you're telling me. Come on, Sean. What happened? He just ran up to the electrical stuff. And there was nothing I could do about it. He was lying where you found him. And that's all I see, all right? You see, what most people don't realise is that high voltage electricity will jump big gaps. You don't actually have to touch high voltage kit to die. Get too close and it comes to you, huh? And believe me, high voltage burns are a particularly nasty way to go. About half our gear has got some kind of graffiti on it. Hey! Not in there. I'll send somebody over to make it safe. We'll get him in the car and see if he calms down a bit. Tell DC Randall we're parked by the church on the corner of Tannery Road. Over. Sean. Listen to me. This is important. Do you know who the injured boy is? Look, I just need to know... No, do you know? Daniel. His name is Daniel. Yes, this could be her. So, yeah.
Good afternoon, ma'am. We're making some inquiries. Would you happen to recognise this capital? Hey! Uh, where are they taking you? I've got to go! I'm sorry, Sean, but we only ever transport close relatives. Look, take me! I've got to go! Listen, mate. I ain't being totally straight with you. See, Danny... He's my brother. Makes me a close relative, doesn't it? Sean, is it Danny who's been burned? Where's your mum? Does she know? I know the family. You'd better go, Andy. Come on in, Sean. Has he been there before? I don't think so. We're trying to find Stig. He ran off, see? And then what happened? I went off to Stig again. It looked like Danny was going to follow, but it didn't turn up. I went back to find him, and he was. And the ambulance guy was with him. You didn't call 999 then? No. Go ahead. Over. Are you scared of something, Mark? Over. The officer will take you home, but I'll have to talk to you again soon. Tell them I'm on my way. Mum, is that me sure that's been a thing? I know, Mum, I know. Mum, I know. What happened, Sean? He, he just ran up to the substation. He, he must have touched something. It was a big explosion and... Look, Mum, I called 999 straight away. It's going to be all right, OK? It's going to be OK. Sean Jordan. Yeah? Mrs Jordan. My name is Randall. I'm a police officer. I need to talk to Sean about the incident that happened at the substation today. For heaven's sake, can't you people ever leave him alone? I'm sorry, Mrs Jordan. But we have reason to believe that Danny's injuries may not have been caused accidentally and that Sean can help us with our inquiries. Sean? Now, Sean, tell me what you and your friends were doing in the substation today. Us? It's their place. They're the ones that broke in. Should be talking to them. Sean, you and your friends were seen coming out of the substation after the explosion. Says who? We have witnesses. Now, why were you there? Look, it's the others you should be talking to. It's their fault. Go and quiz them. Well, Sean, but at the moment, I'm asking you. Or would you rather do this at the police station? Tell her, Sean. What happened at the substation, Sean? What happened today? This morning. They was in our gaff, graffing over all our stuff. Trying to wind us up. But we weren't having it no more. You're not going to let them do that and get away with it, are you? So we went over their place. Nah, come on. That's when we found the substation. Then, with ease, we'll have him, yeah?
woman? The others just left me there. I see Danny and Scarbert. It was an accident, Mum. Sorry. I have to tell you that your son has died. He died because the extent of his burns were so great that his body simply couldn't cope. He died of heart failure. We did everything we possibly could. I'm sorry. Had a go at this. Look, over there there's a football. Oh, yeah. Keep an eye on you two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on, mate. This place is electrified. Oh, that's the frightened little kids. You're right if you don't touch anything. I've seen people working up there. Yeah, well, um, I don't particularly want to mess around with this type of stuff. It's not worth it. You're just scared of getting caught. Stay safe. Stay out. Don't take a chance with electricity. We played there plenty of times before. We found a place to get under the fence. They'd left the door open this time. Everything was busted from the junk. We thought it weren't used no more. We were only mucking around smashing things. I hit this little box and the sparks flew out. Put it again! Put it again! There's one up behind me. I didn't see him. It jumped out and got him. He was my best mate. Don't take a chance with electricity. Stay out of disused buildings. He was stupid, trying to prove how tough he was. I had a go at them kids. Why do you fly your kites around here, eh? We thought it would be OK, but the wind changed. Lucky they let go of it. They'd have been electrocuted. We should have told the police. Suppose he never knew about high-voltage electricity. You're crazy! He ignored the danger signs. Leave it there! He was stupid. He wouldn't come down. He didn't know electricity would go through the kite. It just jumped through thin air. Climbing pylons can kill. Don't take a chance with electricity. We'd gone fishing to try a new carbon fibre pole we got. He said we'd have more luck further down. It wasn't far, so we never bothered taking the pole to bits. Of course we knew about the electric cables. We'd fished there loads of times before. He just didn't think. He forgot the pole was so long. Look out! Carbon fibre poles conduct electricity. Don't fish near cables. What? 
I only ran into the house to answer the phone. I'd left them playing outside on the front lawn. I'll get it. I just forgot the builders had left their ladder behind. Watch out for the wires. They're only for a telephone, silly. I thought she knew those cables were dangerous. Don't climb near cables. Don't take a chance with electricity.